This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Now at five, the latest from the Middle East. Right now, Israel pushing forward with its assault on the southern Gaza Strip. Many have to decide whether to head further south, where they may not find shelter, or stay in their homes as Israeli forces move in closer. Just hours ago, the U.S. vetoed a United Nations resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The resolution was put forward by the United Arab Emirates and was backed by almost all other Security Council members. But the U.S. says halting military action would allow Hamas to continue to rule Gaza. Good evening. I'm Brent Solomon. Kelly Jackson and Ann Allred have the night off. A restaurant owner in Hazelwood just returned from the occupied West Bank to make sure his family is safe. Four of his children live there. Al Justina Cornell spoke to the owner, and she joins us in studio now with that. Justina. Yeah, Brent, so we Sam Hamed has owned Kazlik Mediterranean Cuisine for the last 10 years. More than 20 years ago, he said he came to the United States to find a better opportunity. But he said his home will always be in the West Bank. Now, he sat with, down with me earlier today to talk about his three-week visit recently to check on his family. Now, four of his children, ranging from a 22-year-old to a 13-year-old, still live there. He said while transportation was scarce, he was able to go through Jordan, Jerusalem, and his hometown, which is just north of Jerusalem. Hamad said the overall vibe, it felt like a big jail with everyone forced to stay inside. He explained many places were shut down while some buildings were destroyed altogether. It's helpless for uh, my family, my kids, uh, other family being around and being next to them and a situation like that, everything has changed. Business change all over the all over the world. Business change, change in America, change everywhere in the Middle East. Man also said it was disappointing to see his home in this state, and it's been a very emotional process. He tells me he may return return soon. Justina Cornell reporting. For more on our latest coverage of the war and those affected, text the word Israel to 314-425-5355. Tonight, charges are filed against a man accused of sexually assaulting a Belleville woman. According to police, Tyrone Smith broke into her home on West A Street on Monday. They say he assaulted the woman, stole several items, and then took off in her car. He then crashed that car in Shelby County, Illinois. The suspect was taken to a Springfield hospital where he was arrested. Police say the attack was random. Smith now charged with home invasion, sexual assault, burglary, and other charges. Tony Brown, a former St. Louis daycare center employee, is guilty of child molestation. The 67-year-old man molested three girls between 2019 and 2020. Two of the girls were at the House of Montessori Education, where he worked. A third victim came forward after recognizing him in the news. The jury sentenced him to 12 years for statutory sodomy and five years each for two counts of child molestation. In January, a judge will decide whether the sentences will run consecutively or concurrently. Nurses at SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital voted to authorize another strike this year. While the nurses have not officially called that strike yet, they say they will if several issues go unresolved. Many are concerned about the hospital outsourcing jobs instead of hiring full-time staff from the community. If the nurses call a strike, they will give the hospital 10 days notice Registered nurses last went on strike only a few months ago in September. SSM says it's disappointed a strike was authorized at that time as it only further delayed negotiations for better contracts. Today's the deadline for Missouri to finish felony marijuana expungements. It means people with a felony offense for using marijuana should be legally forgiven. It's part of Amendment 3, which passed last year, legalizing recreational marijuana use. Clerks have to review thousands of cases by hand to clear these charges in qualifying cases. Many counties have been bringing in more help or paying clerks overtime to get that task done. Tonight, a St. Louis pastor is demanding change in his neighborhood. His church has been hit by several speeding drivers, damaging not only the sanctuary, but the street lights around it. He tells Father Your Size Mercedes McKay the city should step up. I spoke with Pastor Anthony Robinson on September 18th when he came to church that Sunday morning and saw his building had a gaping hole in the middle of it. Well, even though it's patched up now, the larger problem is far from being fixed. Pastor Robinson says for years now, speeding has been the norm up and down North Broadway. 
Because of that, his church, Greater St. Luke Baptist, has been damaged several times. Two city street lights were knocked over by reckless drivers, the first one happening back in 2021. Pastor Robinson has reached out to the city multiple times to get these fixed, but has never received a response. Due to the safety hazard, they moved some of the church's activities virtually. It just seems to be this this community has been hit multiple times with, uh, with excuses of why we can improve this community and make sure that at least it's safe. Even if we've not upgraded the things that maybe other communities have, at least make sure it's safe. At least make sure it's lit up so that when everyone comes up and down Broadway, they can at least see clearly the all of the wonderful businesses and all the things that are here in Baden. Speeding is one of the main issues that Pastor Robinson once fixed on this street of North Broadway. Another business owner actually came up to us and said his business has been hit four times as well and he wants change. In St. Louis, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And we reached out to Robinson's alder person. We haven't heard back just yet. It's been a mild start to the weekend, but it won't end that way. Meteorologist Gary Frank now with our weather first forecast. Hey, Gary. Hey, good evening, Brett. Yeah, we're timing out this cold front that's going to change our weather, but it's going to be a slow moving cold front. So right now, the rest of the evening, although it's cloudy, it's still relatively mild. That wind's still picking up, but you'll see off to our west. It's a little bit more disturbed and it doesn't really look like much right now. You got rain on one side. You got rain on the other side of us. We're in between no rain, and that's a trend we've been very used to the last Last few weeks, but this is what's going to be responsible for rain to our north as this whole system drags 51 degrees right now, and it's not a really cold air just yet, but we're actually going to look a little bit warmer, even in the low 60s here, and that's what's going to nudge into our area, even in the upper 50s. So I don't expect a lot of change here in the short term. So the rest of the evening, it's cloudy, it's dry. We're in the upper 50s. We still have that breeze at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. But for the next few days, the key for us is the rain chances are going to increase a little bit. And I say a little bit because I showed you we're kind of in between, not much of that rain. It's still breezy, and although we'll have a break and shift it, it's going to be very cold as a result of that breeze on Sunday. We'll track the rain for us into the overnight hours, the timing of that front and what we can expect after this cold front moves through Brent. All right, Gary, stay close. The city of St. Louis is helping people find work during the holidays. The Agency of Training and Employment held a series of job fairs over the last few months. Five on your side, Travis Cummings takes a closer look. Slate has held five of these job fairs since October. Hundreds of people have come through those doors to see how and in what way they can better their lives and gain some income. 20 employers from all industries were set up at the fair today, making themselves available to job seekers. That included education, transportation, law enforcement, and hospitality. Applicants could inquire about entry-level positions all the way to those that require specific education and licenses. Some employers told us they have hired people on the spot at these events. It's been trying times out here for, you know, a lot of individuals, and uh, if nothing else, being able to start off the new year with a new employment or a new career or just being able to understand where your next check or your next meal is going to come from. Many of these employers say that they will be checking in with applicants over the winter break to see how things are going and if they can be of assistance. Slate has another event planned for January that they're working on right now and several others for the year of 2024. Reporting in downtown St. Louis, Travis Cummings, Five on Your Side. 